This is the final resting place of some of the most influential men and women of the 19th century. Tucked away amongst these memorials to the great and the good are the graves of three largely forgotten pioneers. Baron Headley, Marmaduke Pickthall, and in an unmarked grave, William Henry Quilliam. Although few recognize their names today, in the 19th century, these men were responsible for a religious revolution that shook the British public to its core. They were aristocratic Christians who made a choice which inflamed Victorian society. They converted to Islam. An Englishman, a pucker Englishman, doesn't go native. He doesn't leave the English white, upper middle class and they changed the face of the Muslim faith in Britain. Pitfall's great achievement was to translate the Quran. It has been perhaps the most important translation of the Quran into English that there ever has been. This is the story of three extraordinary men who embraced Islam at a time when to be a Muslim was to be seen as a traitor to your country and the focus of hostility. In the press, he was charged with treason and he certainly was put under surveillance. I think to rebel against his parents and to change his religion, I think it did break his mother's heart. Through the personal journeys of still surviving relatives, we'll discover just what these men achieved and how their legacy lives on today. My impression of Islam sat within post 9-11 thinking and the emphasis around fanaticism. But finding out about Marmaduke changed all that. Suddenly, Islam became so much more. So just what did these Victorian pioneers do to make Islam more acceptable to a society that condemned it? And are there any lessons for British Muslims today? Liverpool. Today it's home to nearly 25,000 Muslims. This is the city's largest mosque. Built in 1965, it would appear that this Muslim community is relatively new to the city. But far from it. A century ago, Liverpool was a flourishing port and Muslim sailors from India and the Far East would have been regular visitors. In fact, just three miles from today's thriving mosque, there are traces of an entire hidden history of Islam in Britain. Echoes of a community that faced many of the same problems as Muslims today, and which may hold some of the solutions. This rather faded terraced house in a Liverpool suburb is where this forgotten story of Islam begins. Although it doesn't look much now, in the 19th century, this was the first mosque in England. In 1889, the house was bought by a man named Abdullah Henry Quilliam. Quilliam was a Victorian gentleman, but he was also a Muslim convert a religious innovator who fought to change preconceptions of Islam at a time when society found it frightening and alien. And it was here that he set about doing it. Abdullah Quilliam had an architect appointed who designed the extension to the building. Ghalib Khan is the chairman of the Abdullah Quilliam Society. Uh, you can look at the arch designs that was uh, made. A few steps down is, is the mosque. The preaching was done from uh, that corner there where Abdullah would be standing. Against the odds, Quilliam established this not only as a mosque, but as a flourishing Muslim institute with its own printing press and an orphanage. It was the center of Islam, not just for Liverpool, but for the whole of Britain. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
It's an achievement that some Muslims believe holds the key to the future of British Islam. For me, Abdullah Quilliam really is a role model. He was so ahead of his times, as it were, that he is the blueprint in, in many respects for how we, we hope to, to continue in our community.